The Simon Filer Podcast, giving authors a platform. Welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Joining me on my podcast today is the fabulous Lauren Jackson, a young author who predominantly writes young adult fiction based around romance, drama and suspense. Lauren joined Wattpad in 2012 and has accumulated over 68,000 followers and her first ever novel on the website has received over 24 million views. That's huge. Lauren is very well known for her viral Wattpad titles and now for her brand new hot and steamy young adult fiction title called Meant to Be. Thank you for jumping on with me on my podcast today, Lauren. Thanks for having me. Great to have you here. So it's been such fun working with you on your audiobook version of Meant to Be from my end. How has your experience been working with me? It's been amazing. Um, you have been so helpful. Everything was super easy. Um, yeah, so I had no idea about how any of it worked, um, being a new writer, because um, I only published my first book last year. So everything has been um, a big learning curve. But you were just so easy. You always replied really quickly. Um, any question I had, you always had an answer for. Or if you didn't know the answer, you found someone else that would. Um, yeah, so you are awesome to work with. Oh, thank you so much. That makes me feel so great. Uh, and we didn't even talk on the phone or anything. It was all via email, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. awesome. So obviously when you first contacted me, I was, you know, do you want to narrate it yourself? Because that's my specialty, you know, getting the authors to narrate it. But you were like, yeah, no, I want a couple of characters. So I sent you a few demos. How was that going through those demos and choosing the perfect voice for, you, for Harley and um for Harley and Go Josie <laughs> what <laughs> sorry um it was good so um when you first suggested that I narrate it I was like I really don't think I'd do a very good job um I did have a little practice myself doing like um like I just recorded myself trying to do different voices and I was like absolutely not <laughs> I just don't think anyone would enjoy that um but the auditions were so good like um when I I was had a trouble picking the girl at first because I like I liked everyone but with Harley um when I heard Indy straight away I was just like yeah absolutely that's Harley whereas um there were two girls that I was tossing up between um but the one that I chose um my friends who don't actually listen to books chose her as well and then I got other friends who do listen to audio and everyone chose the same person which um I thought was quite interesting because you know it was such a range of different people um but yes yeah, so I'm really glad with how it all ended up and yeah it was a very easy process when you sent all the auditions and everyone was really great it was hard trying to just choose one but yeah uh, I definitely think you made the right decision I was I was like spending a lot of time wanting to get back to the edit once I got the vo the vocals coming through from Indy and Cara. Uh, I just think they made the characters come to life. Obviously, I, firstly, your writing is amazing, I've got to say. Like, it's so intriguing. You. Those characters are so lifelike, so relatable. Um, how did you how did you come up with those characters? Um, I think that they're kind of based off some people I know and things that I've experienced in my life. Um, but yeah, I wanted someone, um, so Harley was easy because I just felt like he um, is a similar character that I've always written, like someone who um, is a little bit troubled and has had a lot of things going on, but he's actually a really nice person, but he's just in a lot of unfortunate circumstances. Yeah. Um, Josie, um, she, I don't know how she really came to me. I just, um, so when I heard the song, I Hate You, I Love You, that's um, when I started thinking of her character. Um, so that song is about like how you, when you love someone, but you hate that you love them uh, because of something. Um, and I was like, yeah, I really loved that. And then when um, I was thinking about a story, because I wanted to base it off like the small town or similar small town that I grew up in, um, where you know everyone. Um, and then that character kind of came to mind when I thought about like how hard it would be living in a small town if something like a scandal happened. And yeah, and it all just kind of took off from there. 
Yeah, it's a very cool story and it's got some twists along the way. Obviously, it's hard to kind of chat about it because we don't want to give the, you know, what happens away. Um, but, yeah, if you're after a, a, a young adult steamy fiction, I highly recommend it. The voices just, yeah, make it really come to life, obviously, with the writing, like I said. So it's not the first novel that you've actually written. Um, where do you – well, first let's go way back to when you um, first realised that you actually really liked writing. Yeah, um, so as long as I can remember, I used to just write books and, um, well, as in, like, write little short stories, like, on um, pen and paper. I would just be writing all the time randomly. I didn't know anyone else that did that, but um, and I don't even know where that came from. And then um, I went to a very tiny primary school. Like, there was 30 kids from kindergarten to year six. Like, it was the tiniest school ever. Um, and they had, like, a creative writing thing where um, we were just, because we were all in the one classroom, like, all of the range of, um, different age kids yeah. so there would be like teacher would be teaching like the other years and we would just be sitting around uh, basically with time to kill which was what they'd call um, creative writing time and then I, I would just like you know people would just be sitting there talking and stuff whereas I would just be like writing pages and pages and pages and like I don't know it just it really I just always did it and then um, my sister was going to uni and her professor um, told her about a website called Wattpad. Um, so she's an English teacher, but it was in one of her communication classes. And um, and she was like, oh, well, I don't think that website's like for me, but, you know, you should check it out. And then when I started looking on it, like I realised there was all stories similar to what I was writing by people my age and yeah, anyone can just write on there basically and people can read it and vote for chapters and comment um, or like they can either just do a comment at the end of the chapter or they can comment like line by line so you can tell like what parts they like or if they found anything confusing and things like that. Um, yeah, so I just thought I'd post some stories on there um, and then, yeah, one just took off like crazy and then uh, people kept asking me what's next. So I just started writing more and posting more. And, yeah, so I think I have like nine published works on there, uh, but Meant to Be is the first one that I wrote completely offline um, with the intent to publish. Mm, hopefully the first of many. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so going back to Wattpad, do you recommend other people that are writing or want to write go and have a, you know, look at that and have a go at it? Yeah, I feel like I learned a lot from there. Um, like people can give you feedback if you ask them for it. So um, so what I used to do is I'd be like, oh, uh, let me know what you liked. Is there any parts that you didn't like? Anything that's confusing? And people would like sometimes like um, like there was a scene that I wrote once about a girl walking into a cafe and complaining that there was like no windows but then like later on I had her next to a window and someone was like oh yeah you know you said before that there were no windows and I was like oh like they just point out things like that you don't realize that you don't see in your own writing um so I definitely think it's good having it like another pair of eyes go over mm -hmm. um your and it's also a good opportunity to learn things as well um so I used to write all like high school um romances um, on Wattpad, but whereas now I'm writing more about people in their 20s, although there is um, flashback scenes in Meant to Be that go back to high school. Um, but mainly all my books from now on are going to be at least 20 and over, whereas when I was younger, I was writing about um, high school, which I feel like I learnt a lot, but, um, yeah, I'm not writing that as much anymore. But I feel like I don't know if I would have gone through that journey if I hadn't started writing on Wattpad, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Right. So it's been a big learning curve and it's helped you. Yeah. Yeah. And, I think it's a brilliant idea. Sorry, say yeah. that again. Um, I experimented with different genres as well. Like I'd write like a thriller and, um, you know, I'd, I'd do like a short story that had a like, little bit of horror and things like that just to see how, how it went. Like, and, you know, people are always happy to read it and give you feedback and things like that. So, yeah, I definitely recommend it to anyone wanting to try out. Um, sometimes it can be tricky if you're going to publish, like write a book on there and then publish it because people can obviously access it for free um, when you uh, like put it on Wattpad. But um, it's also just a great chance to learn um, a lot. So it just depends what you want to gain from it, I think. But, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for that. And I'm sure people listening will appreciate that knowing that they've got somewhere to go that they can have a go at and you know see what people think about it 
So the transition then to writing um, your first published novel, how did you go about with your editing process with that? Did, did you engage someone professional or was that a whole new ball game for you? Um, yeah, so I'd never had anyone edit my books before um, and I actually found it really hard to find someone because most of the people um, are American and charge US dollars and the Australian editors that I did find they would use American websites that only charged USD. So obviously the conversion rate is quite extreme from Australian to USD. Um, so it was really hard trying to find someone um, to edit the book. But I, yeah, I did end up finding um, someone on a website called Readsy um, who, yeah, did some edits and things like that. But what I was worried about is when I was writing on Wattpad, I always had that constant demand of updating. Like people would be messaging me and, all the time asking for the next update and when I started writing offline I didn't have that pressure mm. and I was really I would just like get unmotivated and just go like oh, I can't be bothered to finish it like because I didn't have anyone there pressuring me but I actually found it really relaxing because I felt like I used to just quickly whip up a chapter and post it just to um, get people to stop harassing me whereas <laughs> when, when I was getting like in the good way I mean like they just wanted yeah, to yeah. what was <laughs> But when I was writing offline, it was just so relaxed. And then I could also go back and change my mind on things because on Wattpad, once you've posted it, people will remember. So if you try, like suddenly want to change someone's hair colour or um, change the way that you, their name is spelt or something like that, it's too late Like because people have already read the, that part. Whereas mm -hmm. when you write it offline, you can go change it all and everything. So, yeah, it was actually quite um, <laughs> relaxing doing that. But yeah, editing um, was a bit stressful. But now that I've learned where to look and what to look for, it's definitely been easier this second time around. Excellent. So did you find with the editor, did they change anything that you thought that's kind of compromising the actual story or was it mainly grammatical, you know, assistance that you got from them? Uh, mainly um, grammatical stuff. Um there were a few comments like they would say where they were confused about something and in my head it made sense but then when I reread it um in trying to think of someone else reading it I'd go oh yeah that didn't really make much sense <laughs> so that's the big thing I find with me is that I know what's going on and then I just assume that other people do and she her, like she I quite often was like oh you just have to remember you need to explain this like because you know what's happening but I don't and I was like ah Yes. <laughs> so that was um, a big learning curve. So I've been trying to do that, um, like in the second book that I'm working on now, which is um, unrelated to Meant to Be, but our next, my next book. Um, I'm trying to go a bit more in depth with things. And um, yeah, so I'm definitely taking on what she said and trying to implement it now in the writing process. So it's not so much to fix up at the end. Right. Cool. And so tell us a little bit, um, a bit more about your new book that you're writing then. So it's quite different <laughs> to the one that what I... What do you mean, no Josie and Harley? <laughs> no, although I've had quite a few people say that they want a story about their... Oh, without saying too much about the book and the ending, um, they want what's happening next, um, which I have thought a little bit about, although I never plan to do anything more on that. But um, the new book that I'm writing is, yeah, it's quite different. It's um, It's got vampires in it, so it's Ooh. still a slight... Um, based about people that are like in their early 20s but yeah it has vampires and um, it's a little bit darker I guess in some parts but yeah. Oh that sounds very intriguing. So then yeah. let's talk about your writing you know how obviously you still, you've grown up you're obviously a young adult now how was it you know you've got some hot and steamy sections in meant to be um, very tasteful uh, how was it? How did that come to you? How did you think, you know what, I'm just going to do this? I think that's because I was right, um, reading so many books that had it in there. And um, I think that's another journey that I've had. So I used to read just only like uh, very young, young adult, like um, 16 to 17 age, where so like those books didn't have many like steamy scenes. Uh, but then I moved on so about. about a year or two ago I started reading um books about people in their 20s and it was definitely more spicy and then I felt like that's just how that book was like the one that I was writing was definitely more at that age group and figuring and that was a big part of the plot as well like just trying to figure out things um 
But yeah, I feel like when I read a book about people in their 20s, if there isn't much spice, I'm a bit like, oh, I feel like that's a little unrealistic. So right. that's why I like to write it in there. But yeah. Yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, it's a it's an interesting thing. Do you think more, you know, more books nowadays have that sort of, uh, you know, I know a lot of the movies that you see, there's a lot of violence, there's a lot of sex in there. Do you think books are getting more and more, you know, open to that as well? I think so, yeah. Um, and there's just such a big demand for it now. Um, like I've seen a lot of books that don't, I don't think it's bad to not feature it because there's a lot of the time there's a lot of plot and it doesn't have to have that kind of stuff in it. But I do find that um, when I'm seeing like comments on Instagram and TikTok and things like that, if someone's going to complain about a romance book, most of the time it's about the fact that there's no like spicy scenes. Not no romance one. in there. But, yeah, so I don't think they have to have like a hundred scenes in there uh, or anything like that. But I think it should be like a nice balance depending on the book. Because um, some books just don't need it because it's, you know, based about something else. Uh, but in Meant to Be, I just felt like it was a big part of the actual characters. Mm. So what sort of books do you read? Like, is it mainly young adult fiction as well or is it all sorts? Do you get time to read even? Um, I do read a lot, but I also listen to a lot of books. Um, but, yeah, so I read a lot of thriller. That's probably what I read the most. Um, and then romance, especially, um, yeah, like spicy romance. Um, and I do read a little bit of horror, um, a little bit of historical fiction. I read everything, basically. <laughs> Anything that's on me, I read, basically, but mainly thrillers and romance. And if it's a thriller with romance, that is just, like, my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> you won't see it for days. <laughs> well, it Pretty looks much. like you read a lot from all your books in the background. Meant to be looks so awesome up there, just quietly. And it's colour-coded. I recently saw a movie about that. <laughs> What's with yeah, the colour coding really, of your books? Really stressful because anytime I buy new books, I have to find, like, I have to reposition things and it's not as easy as I think. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks nice. <laughs> yeah. So what do you do? What do you do for a crust? I mean, hopefully you'll be making a lot of money very, very soon from your writing, but have you got a day job? Yeah, so um, I'm a clinic manager for an orthodontist. Um, so I do, I work through that I do four days a week there um, because we work longer hours than nine to five so I do that um, four days a week and then I've got a day off in the middle of the week which is meant to be like my errand day slash writing day um, so that's why it took me quite a bit to get my first book out because I was going like weeks without working on it because my time was pretty limited but I'm hoping that the more books I can write the more I can step back from my day job and hopefully do more of what I love fingers crossed. So how long did it take you to write meant to be? About a year um, so I got most of it done actually when um, my workshop six weeks when um, COVID was really bad um, I wrote like I reckon over half of it in that six weeks because oh, nice. <laughs> I to leave the house because there was um you know you weren't allowed to um you were only allowed to do essential stuff so shopping like for groceries and things like that um so because I was just at home and for once I wasn't you know going out and about and doing things I just got so much of it done um but yeah so I'd probably already had at least half done and then I like smashed out the rest of it pretty much in that and then it was all just a, um making it like <laughs> make sense and reading over it and getting someone to edit it. So it took a long time to find an editor and, and then there was like um, waits to get the cover design made and all that kind of stuff. So now I know to book all of that in before I actually finish writing because that's what took like months and months um, mm -hmm. to get. So, yeah, all of that was such a big learning curve. So I'm hoping it'll all just be easier from now on. <laughs> and now that you know what you're doing, well, that's a good heads up to other authors that are listening, like get that stuff sorted out early. So you've got yeah. two, you've got two covers of the meant to be. Um, was it the same yeah. cover designer? No. So um, one that I wanted had um, a four-month waiting list and the book was already finished. So, uh, oh, no, sorry, maybe it was six months. It was a pretty long wait um, and I booked my spot in just because um, I really wanted to work with her. And then um, when everyone, all my friends were like, well, when's the book coming out? And I was like, well, I can't find anyone to edit it and I can't find a, like a designer. 
Um, so that was like what held it up a lot. And um, I have a girl in my book club. So I run a book club called Book Talk Book Club with a few other girls um, on Instagram. And one of them was telling me that her friend was a graphic designer and that she might be able to help. So she, I reached out to her and she hadn't um, book, like designed a book cover before, but she was up for the challenge. So she was the one that um, did this cover. Oh, um, cool. And- yeah, so I, which is the one that I use all the time and it's the one that I love. So, And then the other one, uh, because I ended up getting this done, um, when my spot came around with this other girl, I was like, oh, well, I may as well do like a discreet one and a steamy one depending um, like what people want. Uh, but I ended up just using the steamy one, just the Kindle, and then this is just for the paperback. Mm-hmm. And then I ended up using it for the audio book. Um, one as well because yeah. I just love it <laughs> yeah it is it's gorgeous and it yeah it looks good it looks the cover of your audiobook looks great as well which so exciting like we only submitted that like less than two weeks ago or whatever and it's already out so yeah if you're listening I, to this you can listen to men to be and I highly yeah. recommend it how exciting is that it was so exciting because I accidentally discovered that it was on there because I was just looking it up because um, the price of the paperback kept going up really high with Amazon and I wanted to double check that it had gone back to normal and then it said that the audiobook was available and I was like, oh, it's live. Like I was, I thought it was going to be like so long away. Um, so that was a nice surprise. Yeah, definitely. Well, there's been a bit, of, there's been delays. So there was one title yeah. I put, put up that took about five months to get up because I think after COVID and everything, um, they had a staff shortage. So there was long delays. So I was saying to you between two and six weeks and next minute you're like, it's available. Like that's so yeah. cool. But obviously yeah. it's a good title. Maybe someone read it and thought we've got to get this up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Congratulations then being a, a fully published author with print and uh, ebook and now your audio book. Well done. Thank you. And thank you for all your help in making that happen. Oh, look, it's been my pleasure. I love I loved editing your book. I just couldn't wait to get back to it. I was saying to my kids, you can cook dinner tonight. <laughs> I'm <laughs> editing this awesome book, you know, because it's, I work with a lot of self-help and memoirs and nonfiction. So, um, it was a pleasure to do something that was, you know, just, yeah, out there and fun. It's really, really yeah. good fun, the book. And, yeah, like I said, the characters are so relatable. Um, so where can people find out more about you, Lauren? Uh, mainly on Instagram or, or TikTok. Both of them have, um, like, a link in my bio which has, like my website and email and all the ways you can reach me um and I try to respond back to any every email and every message that I get um like I dedicate time every day to try and go through all my notifications and things like that um so if anyone ever needs help with anything um about self-publishing and things like that they can always reach out to me um Instagram's probably the quickest way because I try to check that all the time and it goes on straight to my like my watch and my phone I get pinged when um a message comes through but, yeah, so all the info about the books and what I'm working on next and everything like that is all on there. Awesome. So just look up Lauren Jackson? Uh, yes, yeah, Lauren Jackson author, but it has two R's because my old one got hacked. <laughs> oh, no good. And, you know, honestly, I'm raving about your book and obviously you you love it to bits as well. You Otherwise you wouldn't have released it. But you are getting some really good reviews on it as well, particularly the print's been out for a little while now. So how how does that make you feel? Um, well, I was so scared to first publish the book because it's easy enough to say, yeah, I wrote a book and people read it when you don't really know the people. But then um, a lot of like my friends and family and the people that I work with um, all bought it and started reading it. And that's when I was like, oh, what have I done? This is a bit scary. Um <laughs> You know, people that don't usually read have read my book and they couldn't put it down and they really enjoyed it. Um, Or that's what they tell me anyway. So uh, it's really nice um, to hear that people do enjoy it uh, because that's why I do write. Like I want people to get lost in books like I do and I want them to love it. So so when they tell me that they do, it's, yeah, it's a pretty good feeling. Oh, that's so sensational. Well, you deserve it because it's fabulous. And obviously having all those followers on Wattpad gave you the grounding to realise that you've got something in your writing. So keep going. How long do you reckon it's going to be before we get to hear the new title then? 
Um, so pretty soon I'm almost finished it. Um, so then I just, ha I've already got my cover ready to go. Learned my lesson from last time. <laughs> So it just needs to be finished and edited um, and then it'll be released. Hopefully, I'm aiming before June, hopefully, if I can get it all done. I want it on this side of this year. So hopefully awesome. very soon. You're obviously incredibly motivated, you know. You, you're working full time, you're writing, you're publishing. Um, you know, do you have any time to sleep at all? <laughs> uh, I'll have to be very strict um, with myself. So basically um, I have like sections of the night that I know what I have to have done by. So like because um, I work pretty late and then I've got to, you know, like I walk my dog and then do dinner and everything like that. And then I have to do an hour of work. Like even if I don't have the motivation to write anything, I just have to read through like what I've done. Like I have to do that um, until – um, I have a cutoff of about 8.30. That's when I usually walk away. And then that's my time to do phone stuff or read. Um, and then I go to bed at like 10. So I have like sections of the night. And then if I don't get that done, I get stressed mm -hmm. because like my work just gets too, like too on top of me. So like I have to force myself to try and do like an hour every night if I can. Oh, you're incredibly inspirational. Look at you go, hey. You are just like a, you know, a bit of a an example for you know, put in the hard work and see what you can achieve, you know, for people that want to pursue a career in writing in particular. Well done, you. I'm proud of you. I bet your parents are proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely tricky, especially um, because there's so much upfront expenses and things like that when you're first starting. Um, so it's hard to still try and write as much as you can while still working so much, um, but you can do it. So I feel like if anyone can do it, um, like, because I did it, so anyone can is basically what I'm trying to say. Um, so I'm like, even when the odds don't look like they're in your favour, you just have to keep pushing through because you will get to the other side. Even if it feels overwhelming, because there were times where I was like, this is just too hard. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Um, you definitely can. There's so many people out there willing to help. Um, and that's what I did. Like, I, if I saw people that had self-published, like, I'd reach out to them um, and I'd ask how they went about things or what people in companies that they used and YouTube is really great because people will go on there and they'll provide like direct links um, that you can use like of people that they've used that like they really liked and yeah so there's definitely lots of um, help out there you just have to ask and yeah definitely um, do it <laughs> if you're thinking about it definitely do it. Oh that's really good advice yeah people are really good on the whole and you know like you said if you want if you need help reach out people will definitely you know show you the right way forward. Well, congratulations once again. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. I've really enjoyed it. Um, really enjoyed working with Cara in India as well. They're very professional and I think they've done a great job with your book. And I reckon that you're going to get more five-star reviews after people hear it. And I really appreciate you joining my podcast today and hopefully um, you'll be up amongst the ranks of Stephen King in no time. <laughs> that would be great. Thanks so much for having me and all your help. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Lauren. We'll talk to you soon, okay? We'll get you on another podcast after we hear your yep. new book. All right, have an awesome day. Thank you. Thanks for joining the Simon Filer podcast. What's your story? Contact Simon for a chat at brisbaneaudiobookproduction.com.